Welcome to today's episode of the Body by Bisson podcast. My name is Thomas Bisson and I am a strength and fat loss coach for my clients online and in person. The purpose of this podcast is to share information that I have gained over the past 10 years and to try and entertain you in a fun and exciting way. I'll be talking about what's worked for myself and for my clients in helping you lose weight and get even stronger. I'll also be addressing some of the biggest challenges and problems I see people do and how to fix it. And I'll be talking about personal stories that I've done myself and making plenty of mistakes. So hopefully you can learn from my lessons, from my mistakes instead of making your own. I'll do my best to keep the language clean and stay on topic. But this is an industry and topics that I'm very passionate and excited about. So I may slip up here and there and you know a few cuss words might come out but my promise to you is to provide you with what i believe to be the best and most relevant information to my knowledge at this moment in time in the future my thoughts beliefs and opinions may change and should that happen you will be the first to know and i'll explain my reasoning on why that has changed and the resources for you to go and check it out yourself to gain more information. Today's topic, episode three, is about calories and counting them. So I've called it the truth behind counting calories. And what most people do is when it comes to losing weight, they'll set their goal. Their goal will be, I want to lose weight. And what most people tend to believe is you have to go straight to diet. And they would be right in thinking that it's a huge, huge part of it. What you do in the kitchen will most definitely affect what happens around your waistline. And the opinions that they're going to have and what they've been told is to focus on a whole calories in, calories out method. And the best way to understand that is to count the calories that you are eating every day. So the logic behind it is quite simple, and it makes a lot of sense why people do this and why people believe this. What they do is they think, right, every single day, I have to burn 2,000 calories. So calories are energy. So I burn 2,000 calories per day. And they think, right, if I want to maintain the weight I'm at, I have to eat 2,000 calories. That way I'm burning 2,000 calories. Um, That's the amount of energy I'm using. So I'm eating 2,000 calories to replace it. My weight should stay exactly the same. Therefore, if I want to lose weight, I now need to eat at a deficit, which means if I'm burning 2,000 calories a day, I need to eat less. Whether that is 50 calories less, whether you're burning, whether you're eating 1,950, 1,800, whatever it happens to be, if you're having less, That means your body has to use more of the body fat and the stores of energy it has already, therefore making yourself lighter. And for those people who are looking to gain weight, looking to bulk up a bit, they'll be going the other way. They'll be like, right, I am 2000 calories. Therefore, I need to add more in, eat more. So then I will grow my muscles. I will grow bigger and stronger and I will achieve my goal that way. And that makes sense. It makes complete sense. And I understand why people do this. However, there's something that people often forget. And that is, if you and I, if we were machines, energy burning, energy consuming, and energy using machines, this would most likely be the best way to do it. However, we're not. We aren't these machines. And by the same logic of calories in, calories out. If you want to lose weight or gain weight, you could still lose weight on a a McDonald's diet. You could eat McDonald's, and as long as you're eating at a calorie deficit, you will continue to lose weight. However, if you are just eating a calorie deficit and your focus, let's take McDonald's as an example. If you're eating only McDonald's at a deficit, sure, you're probably going to lose weight. And it's been proven. There, have, there are McDonald's studies you can look up. And someone just done McDonald's, ate at a deficit to prove the point of calories in and calories out. However, what they fail to look at is how malnourished 
this person had become. And then it comes down to what are you feeding your body with the nutrients that it needs to repair, to grow, to improve and keep your body healthy, to keep it focused. Because as we go in on a daily basis, things inside break down from time to time. Inflammation happens. If you're working out at the moment, muscles need repairing, cells need replacing. You've got trillions of cells inside right now, dying, being born, being repaired. And all of this stuff takes nutrients. But before we even get to that point, the moment someone sets a goal of losing weight or weight loss, they're already starting from a foot behind. Because if you say, I want to lose weight, my goal is to lose 10 kilos. That way I need to eat a calorie deficit. I need to, yeah, I need to eat a calorie deficit. I need to count my calories to make sure that I am eating a calorie deficit. Or if I want to gain weight, vice versa. They're already starting to foot behind because their end goal is to lose weight. When really, that's a bit of a tough goal because if the end result is to lose weight, then it becomes more of a, at what point do you stop? At what point do you change tact? At what point do you, you know, start to reverse it? Because here's the thing. If you're, you know, you can only lose so much weight. You can only lose so much body fat. You have to keep some to stay healthy. And that's the part that is often overlooked. Yes, weight loss is your means to an end. And the end should always be looking at your lifestyle in terms of what's going to help you have the highest quality life in the safest, most efficient, and most effective way possible. That's our real focus. And weight loss is part of that process, but it's not our end goal. And that's the hardest part for people to get their heads around. Because if you focus on weight loss as being your end goal and you're using calorie counting and calorie deficits, calories in, calories out to achieve that goal, it starts to build this real emotional connection to what you're eating without having a standard between what you're meant to be eating. Technically, I could eat 1800 calories of chocolate and still lose weight. It means I'm going to have a miserable time though, because there's not much nutrition or nutrients in the chocolate. And I'm, my body's going to burn through it really, really quickly. And that means I'm going to spend more of the days being hungry, being miserable, because my body's not getting the nutrients it needs to feed and repair itself. The other problem, and this is something that not a lot of people talk about, is when they come across the conservation of energy phenomenon. Now, what, what is that? That sounds like a really fancy way of saying things. Well, what it means is the body, the human body loves adapting to make our lives easier. It's always looking to spend less energy to do things in the easiest way possible so we can hold on to what we've got. Because for most of our human history, I mean, it's only been in the past 150 years that we've had access to food on tap. Before then, the body has evolved to not know when it's gonna get energy, when it's gonna get food, and to hold on to it and look after it with a kind of like a weird hoarding mentality. So it doesn't like giving out energy for things. And so that's how it's always looking to adapt, how it's looking to improve. So for example, now, let's say you've doing a, you're counting your calories. And, and I'll give you an example for if you're looking to bulk up as well. But if you're counting calories and you're looking to get into that deficit, then your body is going to work for about anywhere between three to six weeks. You're going to see some serious changes. It, it may work longer depending on how much weight you are carrying and the activity levels that you're doing. But it's going to hit a point where it's going to stop and it's not going to move. It's not going to lose any more weight. Because what's going to happen is your body's going to switch tacts. It's going to be like, right, we're spending an awful lot of energy. We're not getting the amount that we need in. And so if you're, and this is if you're focusing purely on eating less, eating less, eating less, your body's going to change tacts and be like, right, okay, 
The muscle that we have is expensive. It's expensive for your body to keep muscle. Your muscle, even at rest, even if you slept all day, would burn energy. Fat, on the other hand, costs nothing or almost nothing to hold on to. So your body's going to go through and it's going to be like, right, okay, if we're spending this amount of energy, we need to become more efficient. We need to do, figure out what we can cut. Think of it like an accountant going through it. Like, right, what are we going to cut? What are we going to cut? What are we going to lose? What are we going to lose? And it's like, do we really need this muscle over here? No? Okay, lose it. And your body starts to break down muscle and get rid of it. And the problem there is your weight is still going to go down, but your fat level is going to stay the same. You're going to have less energy. You're going to feel more lethargic. And other things in the body are going to start breaking down. There's going to be more stress put on certain parts of your body that's going to really make it hard, harder to live. The quality of life starts to go down. All because your body has learned now to use less energy. You're in a survival mentality instead of a thriving mentality. And that's the problem you have when counting calories. It is that conservation of energy kicks in, which means you're now burning less. You've got less energy to do the things you want to do. And the obsession with food. Look at most bodybuilders when they go on stage. Their quote is, when you feel your worst, you look your best. And they have got some of the most unhealthiest relationships to food I have ever seen. They are ravenous. And if your body's not getting the nutrients, it's going to let you know that it hasn't. And you're going to start craving and your hunger's going to be up. And you're going to start getting very emotional about the food that you're eating. These are where ca counting calories and focusing on calorie deficits and overeating. If you're overeating, it's even worse. The problem with that is supply and demand. People think by putting in more calories, it means that muscle is going to grow because you've got the extra energy there for the muscle to grow. But demand has to be there first. So your training regime has to be pushing those muscles to the point where it needs the extra calories to grow. So think about kids. Like my mom would tell me all the time, there are certain points in my childhood, I would eat them out of house and home. And there were some points where they could not get any food into me because I was going through growth spurts. The growth spurts were happening inside me. And that was what was causing my body to change and to cause my hunger to spike. And that would lead me into eating more. And that is why I want you to think about this next way, this better way that I try and teach my clients. The first thing is to focus on awareness. You need to know what you're eating, how much of it, true, you do need to know that. But you also need to know is what type of food you're eating. We all know, have an idea of what's healthy. I could show you a list of foods and I feel pretty confident that most of you could actually point out, oh yeah, this, 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 you kind of want to eat this. You don't really want to eat any more of this. And you could, I feel confident that you could, you could do that to a fairly good level and see results. So awareness is always the key. Next, it's to remove the idea of how much you're eating. The calorie deficit, if the goal is to lose, if you want to lose weight to achieve a better quality of life, yes, you do need calorie deficit, but it's not our primary focus. Our primary focus is our first attention to eating highly dense, nutrient dense foods, foods that are going to fill your body, fill your cells with what it needs and that's what's going to satisfy that hunger. So imagine you're a high performance sports car. The amount of details people will go, you know, you wouldn't put um, the cheap, crappy fuel from Shell, the unleaded stuff. You want the premium fuel in there. Your oils are going to have to be more measured. The grease, I mean, I don't really know much about cars, to be fair. I probably could have chosen a better analogy. But a high performance sports car is what you need to focus, like to pretend that you are, like your high performance machine. Not only do you need the energy, but you need the nutrients from the food. You need the proteins. 
you need all of the amino acids that come from the proteins. And that's a bit of a dense topic that we'll go into another time. You need the carbs, you need the fats, you need all of these other things to make your body function right. And that's where the attention should be put first. And primarily, once you have that and you're giving your body what it needs, what you might start to notice is that your appetite and your hunger and your cravings are going to start going down naturally. Some people, it doesn't, it doesn't, and that's okay because there's some habits that are more hardwired built in. But focusing on building up and getting your body to absorb the amount of nutrients it needs is our first point of call. Then once that habit has been established, then you go to a calorie deficit and start to bring it down. And you're going to start to notice some changes in your body. Because also now your body's less focused about eating away the muscle and more focused about getting rid of some of the fat because you're giving the muscle, you're giving everything else what it needs to thrive instead of survive. That's our real focus. And to go forward, why I believe this is a more superior method, it's because it's safer. You're giving the body all of the nutrients it needs, even if you maintain your weight, your body composition. And that's what you're, so if you take your total weight, let's say I weigh 70 kilos. My, I'm made up of, let's say, 14% body fat and the rest muscle. That's not true because I've always got water in there, but just for easy numbers. My body composition is that is those two numbers, what I'm made up of. Whereas if you focus on nutrient-dense foods, you're going to be made up of better muscle and less fat. So your body shape might start to change, even though you're not seeing the weight reduction on the scales. Not only that, it builds up a stronger relationship with your body. You start to know what it needs. When you're actually hungry, when you're habitually hungry or you're habitually trained to eat, and when you're craving crap, and what your body actually means when you do feel those cravings for crap. I'm saying crap, I probably shouldn't say crap. I mean like sugary foods or savory foods. And... I personally believe, and since I've started doing this for myself and I've been teaching it to my clients, that their relationship to food has become even better. They're no longer so emotionally dependent, so emotionally driven by food. And that's a real healthy place to be. What do you think? I'd love to hear your opinion. Leave me a like, comment, questions, email me. Absolutely love to hear from you. Please like and subscribe or send this video to someone who you feel would benefit. Thank you very much. And I will see you next week.